Welcome back to the Dream Barn series. This is episode four. In this video, I'll be installing a metal roof. Now, this is the first time I've installed a roof of any kind, and to make this even more exciting, I'm gonna be doing this all by myself. I decided to split this video into two parts because I had a ton of footage, and while I was editing, I realized I've learned so many things along the way during this project, and I just wanna give you guys the whole story. Also, a quick disclaimer, I'm not gonna claim any of the things you see in this video are correct or even safe, but they work for me and I'm still alive. In episode three, I installed all of the fascia trim around the perimeter of the building. And before I start slapping roof panels up here, there's a couple more things I have to take care of. So I overlap my fascia from underneath the soffit up and around to the roof line. And the plan is to put the roof over this so that the roof, you know, water coming down will go on the roof and then drip off. If water ever gets underneath that roofing though, it's gonna slide under here and go under the fascia, drip down into the soffit and just make a mess. So now I'm gonna tape this seam here with zip tape all the way around the whole perimeter of the building to keep water from going underneath my fascia. Zip tape is a bit expensive, but it is an amazing product. It sticks to just about anything, but it sticks particularly well to the zip system sheathing. It forms an acrylic bond with the paint on top of the plywood, and once you stick it on, it's waterproof, and it just does not come off. Okay, the roof is entirely zipped right to the edges. Flashing tape. Every seam is covered. Well, almost every seam. There is one more big one that I need to take care of. All right, it is almost roofing time. We got all of the, uh, the trim on, the fascia. There's one last step, and that is, this here is the pitch transition. Right here is where we change pitch. And to be honest, the framers did not do the greatest job on this section here. They put a lot of little scabby pieces in and there's just a lot of leaks in this zip tape that I'm finding. So what I wanna do is put a sheet of ice and water shield over this joint so that when I do have my pitch transition, if anything does leak here, if we get ice dams or water's backing up inside under the transition, then I want to be able to uh, have this like double, triple protected. So I'm gonna put a roll of ice and water shield on both pitch transitions. Ice and water shield is a thing that people up north know all about. It's like a really thick rubber material with a completely sticky back. And you put it on areas of your roof that you don't want any water to ever drip through. And after I put it on, I put another bit of zip tape here just to transition from the ice and water to the deck. All right, it's one of those things where you're not sure if you really need it, but in those winter days when you have ice dams forming on your roof and uh, you got water dripping into your shop and you wish you had put down the Grace ice and water shield and the zip tape, I don't want to have those feelings. All right, today is the beginning of the roof project and I'm just measuring for square to see how the roof looks before I put panels on. And I have not really been happy with the work that the builders did overall. There's a lot of rough edges, a lot of stuff I had to fix. But I'm just checking for square here and I'm doing the three, four, five. I measured nine feet this way to that point, 12 feet up to there. So this should be 15. And I gotta say, that is a nice sight to see. So it looks like this corner at least is a square corner. And this is where I'm gonna start. And I really just have to start and go because there's not a lot I can do once I get started. It's 
time. It's time to put all of this metal up on that roof. So the sheets come neatly stacked on this huge pallet and there are 84 sheets. Unfortunately, the very first sheets that I was gonna put on the roof were 40 sheets down. So here I am moving sheets one by one to get down to the layer I need to start with. Okay, finally down to the level I need to be. These are the first ones to go on the roof. Now, how do I get this up to the roof? You're probably gonna have a hard time believing this, but my entire metal roofing education came from YouTube. I watched so many videos about metal roofing before I started this project. And I, I saw many different ways to get metal on the roof. And this is the one I'm gonna try first. You carry the piece over. Hopefully it doesn't fold in half. Hopefully no wind comes along. Lean it up. And then just sort of drag it up on the roof. And don't get me wrong, this is probably the easiest and most straightforward way to get metal up there. You just gotta hope it's not a windy day, you got good footing, and you have to have a lot of free time because if you look at the elapsed time on this one panel, it took about nine minutes to get it up there. And that is not ideal. Okay, lifting them one by one up on the roof. There's, I don't know, 60, 70 sheets. It's not going to work for me, so I'm trying something new. <laughs> I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to try it. Ratchet straps and 2 by 6s Here we go. I don't have a forklift or a crane or any kind of lift, so I put my monkey brain to work and came up with this contraption. And I'm just gonna give it a shot. All right, I'm gonna try three first. I've never seen it done this way before, but there's been so many times around the farm where you're, you're in the middle of a project and something has to get done. You look at the tools you have, you just put your brain to work, put some things together, use trial and error, be creative. Eventually, you figure stuff out. All right, I think this is the system. Three more sheets up on the roof, and that only took about 12 minutes. So that was easier much faster, much easier, and not quite as sketchy. So that's good. But yeah, I got, I don't know, a hundred panels here to move up there, three at a time. <sighs> I got four panels up here. Let's see what I can do right now. Uh, this first one is just so critical. If this one's off, then the rest of them are going to be off because they all stack on top of each other. The thing about the metal roof is it is all about that first panel. If that first panel is off by a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch from square, and you put 20 more panels on after it, by the time you get to the other side of the roof, you're going to be off by several inches. So I spent about 20 minutes just looking at this panel, measuring it, moving it back and forth until I decided to put that first screw in because once you put the screw in, you've made a commitment. And there it is, my first and second metal roofing panels ever, in place and ready to go. The sun was going down, it was a long day, and I was feeling pretty good. All right, I gotta figure out my screwing pattern, but I got two up and they're, they're lining up, they're square, the fronts look good. And uh, yeah, I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna do the rest of this roof. So I went to bed that night feeling pretty good about myself, had a good night's sleep, 
and then woke up the next morning with a strange feeling of dread. All right, so last night I put these two panels on and they look pretty good, but I totally screwed up. And my, <laughs> I'm glad I did it on the first two panels. So here's what happened. The, the, panels are, the panels are supposed to overlap each other as you go. And as you can see here, this panel here has a long, like a rib, a, a bigger rib with a foot. And this side has the rib with no foot. This is supposed to go on top of this. This foot is supposed to sit on the deck and then this goes over and it ends here. So <clears throat> I got to take these two panels off and redo them. So I'm glad I messed up early and uh, you know, no big deal. The way those panels lap, I couldn't just unscrew them and then rescrew them in place because then every other panel following would underlap the previous one and be a pain to install. So I had to go over and do a bunch of measurements and basically change of plans. Okay, change of plans. I'm taking this panel up and this is gonna be the first panel on the other side. Then I'm gonna take that panel up and that'll be the second panel and I'll relap them. But I'm gonna start on the other end and move this direction. So once these panels go this way, I'm gonna put a long sheet here that goes all the way up. And I'd like to have a full sheet. So, so I measured from where this line is, where the joint is right there. And I measured three, 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 because the panels are three feet wide, all the way over. And I finished a three footer right here at that line. And that leaves me 26 inches. So if I start a panel here, that's a 26 inch panel and it ends there, then every three feet will get me over to that, that joint. This blue line here on the left, that's a mess up on the right. Uh, that blue line there is my, my square line. So the panel has to be lined up square with that blue line right there. So, now I have to cut this panel down to 26 inches wide. Very nice. That was a very handy little tool that I got just for this job and it came in really handy over the course of the whole roof. Here I'm just bending up the edge of this panel so that it will fit on the edge of the roof. And then we were back at square one with the first panel again. And the problem on this side was this corner of the roof was not square. It was off by about a quarter of an inch. So it took a lot of measuring and sort of finagling with this panel to get it set. But I got it set, and then my battery ran out. Okay, my battery ran out last night, but I got all this done before the sun went down, and I got my pattern finally, my rhythm. Things are lining up nice. Got a nice edge there. So a couple more panels here. Then we'll be at this joint here, but then I'm gonna go up and try and do the top part up there. On the edge of each panel, before the next panel overlaps the final rib there, you're supposed to put this rubber butyl tape on the seam, and it's supposed to help keep water from going underneath your panels. All right, I've never seen anyone installing a metal roof put this rubber stuff on, but it's Recommended by the manufacturer to put this tape on here. It's like butyl tape. It's like sticky silly putty. And that's supposed to close up the seam. It adds five minutes to each panel. It's a pain in the ass. So things pretty quickly fell into a rhythm. Bring up a panel, lay it down, screw it off, add more tape, bring up another panel, lay it down. All right, so this is the layout. And that right there is math. So just about perfect. Actually, it is perfect. So now I can put a full long sheet on 
right there. Nice. The 12 foot step ladder was indispensable for this project. I spent so much time standing on it, adjusting the edges of the panels, putting down this foam strip, which goes up underneath the panels to keep debris and bugs from going up those ribs. And then of course I could stand on it to screw all of the ends in. All right, so that came out really nice. That is a nice straight line. So now, yeah, my screws are off. <laughs> oh well, nobody cares. So next up I have to do a pitch transition there and then I'm gonna try and do that little section up top and get these connected so that we have, if it does rain, the rain will come right down and go off. So that's the goal today is to get that pitch transition up and started, then we'll move over. And the next big thing is these 24 foot long panels here that go all the way down and there's five of them. These metal roof panels are not designed to bend in this direction. So when you get to a pitch break like this, you need to use this stuff called pitch break. And it's just an angled piece of metal that you hammer in. And then I, of course, use zip tape to keep water from going behind the transition. Okay, there's the transition. I, ha I still have to put the foam underneath the bottom. There's gonna be foam under here. And then I gotta screw each one of these down. But that's the transition. Now the other ones are gonna lay on top of this so water doesn't go backwards like that. So now upper panels. So the first panel on the upper pitch also got cut down to 26 inches to match up with the panel below it so that all the ribs from the bottom go right up and line up all the way up to the peak. And here's where my confidence really started to grow with this project. I learned how to curl the panels into this taco shape and I could set up the step ladder right on the edge of the roof carry the panel up on my shoulder and then very, very carefully step up onto the roof. And once I'm up there, the panel's actually really easy to handle as long as it stays in that taco shape. Because if there's any wind at all, as soon as you unfurl it, it turns into a sail. I really didn't have my legs yet. I was still having a hard time standing on that pitch, but the idea was to get the panel in place overlap it on top of its neighbor panel, and then just put a single nail in the top to keep it from sliding down. Then I could climb down, screw it off, put on the butyl tape, and then carry up the next panel. And after five or six panels, I really got into a rhythm. And this is where I perfected my technique on the pitch. As soon as I got to the top, I could stand on the peak with no trouble. And that's where I would unroll the panel. And then my ankles got used to standing on the transition and I could walk down, hook that panel on, lay it down. It helps to have really grippy shoes here. And then I could crawl up, get the nail in the top of the panel, and then the screwing. So much screwing. Hello, B. What are you doing up here? Hi there. Staying warm on the black roof? All right, so that's, that's my day. I got a rhythm now. I got it figured out. The next section is the big pieces, so 24 five footers going all the way up and I'm going to put those on and then I'm going to do the next upper level and then we'll be beyond a quarter of the way and then this is just straight run and then we have to do the other side but this is uh, this is going it's going well it's going slow but it's going well so that's the news 
I'm going up now to feed the bees. Topping off syrup. I know this video is a long one, but I promise part two is gonna go a lot quicker. I will be wrapping up the entire roof project in the next video, and I'll be doing a lot more problem solving because I had a lot more problems on the second half. So stay tuned for that one. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram, you can do that over there. I'm posting photos of this project from last summer because I didn't get to post them last year. And if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and check out all the other barn build videos in this playlist. Thanks for watching.